Well, hello. Welcome to Drawing with Fire. I'm Valerie, your neighborhood biography artist. Joined today with Hubby. Oh, and we are doing our January advice and critique. Yay! So today we have Lee, we have me, we have Sheila. We're full of elephants today. And we have Terry. So we are going to go ahead and get started. Yeah, maybe. You know what? We'll do this one at a time. That way I can move it around a lot easier. Hey, Ted. So Lee's, um, he actually had post sent this to me through Facebook Messenger in December for December's critique but I did not see it and I felt so bad for the last month and I promised him he would be first for January so that's what we're gonna do he's done a very beautiful stylized uh, piece with uh, we've got mountains raven buffalo and textured trees this is really cool I really like it we can see some of the marks and whatnot. Hey, Greg. Hey, Robin. Okay. Hey, uh, Sheila and Eve. Ted says, hi, I'm Terry. Hi, I'm Terry. Hi, Terry. I'm Jason. I'm confused. Are you saying that <laughs> Terry, Ted, are you secretly Terry and have been Terry all along? And or, so, that's fine, too. Or, Terry, are you uh, on Ted's <laughs> account? Account. It's very possible. I actually don't know his wife's name. Or is Ted being ironic? Because <laughs> that's possible too, because it's Ted. Hi, Handy. I am going to try to tape this up just so it won't move around on me constantly. I have my colored pencils. In fact, I've added a couple of colors just so we can get Ted said the different volume of that. Uh, said my art was Terry. His art was Terry. Oh, I said Terry. Sorry, I meant Ted. Did I say Terry? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Wait, so there is no Terry? There is no Terry. I misspoke. Okay, so the first thing that stands out to me that I just taped down on this lovely piece is our buffalo kind of gets lost in our tree. Where did Terry come from? I have no idea where Terry came from. I feel so bad. Secret spy name. My name's I Cloth. renamed him. Terry Cloth. <laughs> well, that's good. All right. So okay. we've got wonderful texture in the tree, and we have awesome texture in the buffalo. And I really think if this was my piece, oh yeah, forgot the disclaimer. This is how I would do a piece. If you are doing your pieces differently and you love how they're coming out, then you keep doing that. Because you're awesome. You're a pyro artist. You can do this. Yeah. I said it backwards. You're holding those pencils very aggressively. Because <laughs> I just realized I said it backwards. Oh, well, it works that way too. So, what I would do, and I really like the shading on this back end of the buffalo. That is so cool. Yeah. In fact, I think, I don't have his reference photo, so I don't know if he went from a reference or if he drew this out. But I think if it was me, I would darken the tree up a bit so we can kind of calm down some of the texture. And in calming down this texture, not getting rid of it, just calming it down, our buffalo's behind has already popped out even more. We, I don't know if in this piece if there's a, a light source so whether you're going for realism or keeping it stylized we can give it some 3d feeling to it slime time is here hi slime time and did you say hello to greg I believe I did, and but if Robin? not, yes. And Eve? I did. Okay. That's when you were trying to figure out who Terry was. Okay. So darkening up the tree, all, I, I would say all the way up, and you don't have to black it out, because I do like the texture. Um, 
allows the buffalo to stand out more. And if we look down here, I don't know if this was a style choice or unsure. Actually, it looks kind of cool. I'm just wondering. If we go darker down here, do we lose our buffalo? And that may have been a choice that Lee made to keep the buffalo from... Wait, Lee? This is Lee's piece right here. Oh. The mus mushroom that I showed is Teddy's. So, I think that, yeah, I think that's why he was afraid of losing, um, based on doing this, losing the buffalo. Oh, huh. Slime Time says, I just realized my name is Edith. That's my <laughs> husband's boat's name. Oh, well, hello, Edith. So what happens if we go, ugh, I hate when pencils do that, go darker. When pencils go dark. <laughs> I think, hmm, what do you think of it having the line, the halo, around, I'm going to guess, the grass in order to... To hmm. make the buffalo stand up? Yeah, I actually think it looked better with the halo. I think it does too. Yeah, and I don't think I can erase so we can go back to it either. <laughs> okay. I th yeah, I Did think you, he made a good artistic choice with you that. Need to, you need the contrast, otherwise the buffalo is going to get lost in the grass, in the yeah. shadow. Oh, taking the ink off. All right. So... Right here, let's see here, the buffalo has a mane. That, I think, is a good value for it right there. But if we're going to keep the halo, I think, let's see here, let's go a little darker. I think a little bit of contrast in the buffalo might help. Not too much, because I really like the texture of it. So let's see. Let's see here. So this hair, if we were looking at the buffalo, would be darker because it's kind of laying on top of other stuff. Um, hmm. Carolyn Cortich is here. Hi, Carolyn. And Beryl's here. Hey, Beryl. So and you're, Lana. You're, your distant cousin by marriage <laughs> by marriage like nine times removed or something like that eight eight times removed does it even count after that yes i suppose if you're talking about like thrones and successions like i am the count of something i don't know i have to look it up see yeah. which one <laughs> i am the count of, of chicken soup nine times removed <laughs> i have a claim to the throne yeah i think the halo that um, terry had in let's put it back in worked actually for this piece because it makes the buffalo and since this is already a stylized piece i think that's just fine and i i have a question because mm -hmm. And this is Native American stuff. So is this a piece referring to um, the buffalo and raven uh, legend? Because I raven, don't know. Raven, well, raven's not on the buffalo. No, a raven's like a, up in the tree. But there is a raven and a buffalo, which is pretty crucial to that part of the legend. Is that? Yeah. I'm wondering, since we've got the halo down here, if the halo should continue so that... It, well, if it was, if it was a, if it was a tribal piece, it probably would yeah. have that halo all the way around it to show that it's sacred. But that, oh, good point. That is this again. That's a stylistic choice. Yeah, I think if I was to burn this, I would actually put. If I was going to have the halo at the bottom, I'd continue the halo at the top that way. If somebody was looking at it, they wouldn't think, "Oh, was it just because they didn't want to go to the edge?" This would look definitely like a choice yeah. that was made. So I would actually, yeah, kind of highlight the halo. 
because now our buffalo really stands out this way. So, and then with the darker tree, the texture isn't so much. And this almost looks like tree bark. It looks really cool. I'm not sure. That's almost like a path right there. Oh God. I'll be back. <sighs> okay. Um, hmm. I don't know. That's really cool. I don't know how much of that I would change. If any, now on our raven, make sure our raven's on the screen. I think I would just darken a few areas. But keep that texture. You did a really good job on that texture. But just a little more definition. And I think that would do it. And again, let's see here. I like the white of the mountain, the snow, because that does give you a big contrast. So I'm wondering, let's see. Let's see. If darkening the branch, and again, it depends on what your uh, light source is as to where you would darken. I'm going to assume because it's away from the tree uh, base itself that we have a little bit of light on it. But we could darken it without making it a silhouette. Get some that in there. And so you've got a tree branch that's curling, and it's curling in front of the branch. So, in order. Now, I know this piece is finished and it's sealed so there won't be any changes to this one i don't know that i'd do too much anyway give us a little more contrast so. doing that kind of separate the kind of smooth it out a little bit so that our two main subjects, which are the animals, stand out a little bit more. The mountain, I, I wouldn't change anything. Maybe on the trees, maybe a little more breakout branches to kind of fill in the area. I'm not sure what burner that Lee is using. It looks like maybe it's the one that hollow because he does have some lighter sources, but I'm not sure. I asked and haven't heard back yet. But I think kind of filling out the trees a little bit more would make, you, make the background feel a little fuller without overdoing it. Just a few here and there. We, um, let me know down in the comments if, since I don't think you're in chat. Hey, Paolo, um, what you use for your white? I'm guessing colored pencil, um, but it could be some acrylics. So I just fill those in a little bit more. Not fully. Get, we want some air in between the branches, especially since it's winter. Bring that out a little bit. And then the background, I actually think you could kind of darken it just a little bit. I don't know what she's barking about now. Who knows? So I toot the bathroom, so. Uh, let's see. Okay, darkening it up just a little bit. Just so we have some different layers in there. Did you say hi to Paolo? I did. Oh. Yes, did that. And did you see that Beryl said that she could be related to George as well as Martha? I did not, because if she's related to George, then she's related to me. Yep. Hee <laughs> hee. Alright. So yeah, I think just filling it in a little bit more in the background, maybe darkening up a little bit, again helps your foreground be more in the foreground. Do you see anything else? I'm curious about the five ground. 
The five ground? Since... I mean, we have the four ground, <laughs> but what about the five ground? Well, let's see here. One, two... This is the one, problem, folks. Two, when I say something, three, Valerie takes it to the literal... Four, five. We got five ground in you here. Just, you just took it away from me. <laughs> I took it. I just you took just it. just ruined it. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't. Do you see anything else? I mean, I think the halo for the buffalo would really. <laughs> Troy's on. Hey, Troy. <laughs> hey, Timmy. He came to harass us, huh? Yes, he did. How oh, fun. <laughs> Troy is Jason's best friend from the army. Yep. All right. I'd say brother, actually. He is my brother. Your brother. Um, Handy, I will see what I can do. Alrighty. So, does anybody have any questions on it, and do you have anything else? Um, no, I think that it's really cool. I, I like the layout. I like the composition. And, yeah, it's, I'd like to know um, the story behind it. And I think that it is really appealing from the from the standpoint of um, whether it, it is or it isn't a Native American piece. It has that appeal. It does have that feeling, though. Even yeah. the style of it. So there's some spirituality about it, I think. So. Yep. Um, I really it. like it. I like it. It's a good composition. Good job. Well done. All righty. Now we are going to move over to 13 year, years ago me. Way back machine? Way back machine. <laughs> Alrighty. So this is my very first piece. Eve, I'm required by law to do dad jokes. All yes, right? he is. So. <laughs> so this is my original piece from uh, December of 2005. You can see that right there. There's some private information I just want to put out. Um, this is on basswood. This is the piece of wood with the original burner, a uh, versatile non-variable temperature that I grabbed and a graphite pencil and this reference fo photo that I googled so long ago. I actually went looking for this photo again to redo this piece because I'd like to see what it would look like 13 years later, but I can't find the photo anymore. I might have to wing it. There's a reason the elephants have no feet. Even though I was doing art at this time, I wasn't sure about burning, so I did some stippling. Um, I tried out tips. Of course, I outlined because I was afraid the graphite was going to go away with my hand and whatnot, so I wasn't going to be able to see where I was going. Um, I used the chisel tip and I use the universal point for shading. I still have that burner, just like I have this piece. And now we're going to talk to... Oh, and this, the gray, is oil pastels. And I was trying to figure out how I could make it because they're kicking up dust. I was trying to figure out how... And I couldn't see the feet in the reference photo because of the dust. So I, I tried to figure out a way to put the dust in, so I used gray or, and, and white oil pastel. You can definitely see how rough <laughs> this is. So let's talk to me. Kind of a heavy hand. You're not leaving it up there? No, I've got a printout so I can color uh, on it. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I can color on it. i got to print out. Why? So if you're new to pyography and... You're seeing all these wonderful pieces that other people are doing in the groups and you're feeling bad about yourself. Don't. We all start somewhere. We all have to start somewhere. And, you know, sometimes the newbie, new person to burning starts a little better. But what you don't know is they may have an art background and that makes a big difference. In fact, over in the group, I posted my second burning. And you can see the difference just between the these two so first me don't outline there's no reason to the graphite is not going anywhere it might be lighter but it's not going anywhere um let's see here contrast makes a big difference now i'm trying to remember my reference photo 
you got to remember it 13 years ago. So we can go darker. I remember this leg is out front. I did not work from a black and white photo or sepia photo. I didn't realize that that would be helpful. So I would try that. So, um, I need to catch up with you up on chat. Mm -hmm. um, Edith says it looks great. Oh, thank you. Beryl says poor elephants. I don't know why. Because uh, there's no feet. Oh, there's no feet. How are they it. standing? Brent C. Boyer is here. Hi, Brent. Eleni P. is Hi, here. Mary Robin thinks it looks great. Thank you. Vic, oh, Victor Kurgan and Troy backed me up on the uh, the five ground by saying you have to address the first, second, and third ground <laughs> um, before you skip to fourth and fifth. Um, and then I have a question. Yes. So this is your first piece, mm -hmm. like ever. Ever. So this is the what very first wood caused burning. the spark. This is what caused the spark. Because everybody that looked at it was like, oh my God, you've never burned it. It looks so awesome. So I was like, hmm, let's give it another try. I look at it now going, hmm. Well, it still hangs on our wall. <laughs> no, it's, it's up there at the top to remind me. What's our, oh, it's the dragon that's on our wall. Yeah, the dragon was my third piece i believe so gotcha yeah so contrast younger me makes a big difference well you really dug in on those outlines i did well no remember my um i'm using the for this piece i'm using the wallet hollow non-variable temperature so there's only one heat for this and the the chisel point really oh and i didn't sand i did not know you needed to sand i knew zero about wood burning well, other than i saw it in the store liked the picture i saw and said hey let's do this what i'm saying is is that there's a lot of relief there yes there is oh you're looking at the original yes yeah in fact i didn't even seal this for a couple of years Oh, Lenny, uh, Lenny P. is from Greece. Yeah. Yeah, not, the sh not the movie or the musical, <laughs> I, I don't think. I think from the actual no, country. from the actual country. Yeah. yeah. So, sanding your board makes a big difference in how your burner... Yeah, Greece. Huh, sandy. Yeah, sandy. <laughs> makes a big difference as to how well the tip glides over the wood. <laughs> Sorry. Here we go. And because I didn't sand and couldn't adjust my temperature, that is another reason that the chisel tip gouged the wood is because it was getting caught on the grain as I was drawing it down and following the grain. And I would have to go back over it trying to, to fix a line so some of them are thicker because of that I could have done more stippling to give it more contrast and shading this was a gift for a young boy who loved animals loved elephants that's why um, yay we got we get Ted coming Greece songs <laughs> So I left some areas completely blank because I was like, well, they're light. That's where the light's hitting them. So I didn't burn it all. But looking at it, I could have, with a better burner, whether it's the versatile or wire tip, it needs more. I think I have a good base. But it lacks the contrast. In fact, it's too stark. And I'm not gonna. I don't think I'm gonna do all the elephants. I'll do, I'll do this back one. But in darkening up this trunk, which is behind this elephant, it would make this elephant pop out. Eve has a question. Mm-hmm. Just clarification. Mm -hmm. um, 
You said this was for a gift, but you still have the original. Uh, the original came back to me. Ah. We'll just leave it at that. Okay. We shall leave it at that. Black days. Black days. Well, that's why I covered the name. Gotcha. Okay, so... And Beryl says, shouldn't that baby... Back, back, baby, back, baby. <laughs> this baby? Sorry. I uh, have some back legs. In the photo, the back legs are hidden in the dust. Again, <laughs> I didn't... I, I couldn't see. It was not a good reference photo. And that's a, that is definitely another um, thing to take a look at is your reference photo. This wasn't a good one starting out because I couldn't see all the information in order to do everything. So paying attention to your reference photo, the better the reference photo, the um, easier it is to burn. That does make a difference. It says the back legs were stolen by the same poacher that stole the feet. <laughs> Patience is another thing. I think I did this in, I don't know, an hour wow. at the most. And had I... Wow, old you is... Um... Well, that damn burner was hot. Yeah. It was hot. I had a washcloth washcloth or a sock taped around it it's a washcloth well it is now oh. I, don't, I don't remember I think it was I think it's the original washcloth from the very first time and so I was trying to hurry up and get it done um, it was done on the day it was I was wanting to give it so that was another reason why I was trying to hurry But if I guess would have taken some more time, planned it out better, and looked for a better reference photo, this, uh, these elephants would have feet. Because what I would have done with the dust flying up, at least, if I still chose to do that, is I would have taken the burner and done soft circles to kind of blend it out and it would be easier to do with the burner than it is the color pencils right now but in yeah because I pulled the gray all the way up which means the dust is back here too and I'm guessing hiding baby's legs but you're right baby's legs would have been right if they're stretched right about there I since I don't have the reference photo, baby's legs could have been there, but it may have looked like um, something else. How'd I put it in? Oh. Yeah. So I may have <laughs> made a choice not to put it in. That's if you get my drift. Smart. If you get my drift. So I would just, with the burner, with a shader, um, I would have just done circles. In fact, I have a scratch board that I grabbed. It's not sanded, so it's not going to. Uh, it's not going to burn very well for what I want. But let's see here. Based on the value, I'm going darker with the elephants. Um, Troy just says it looks amazing for the first time. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, we'll use this. This um, is a test board. Ted says, because the sock said you had burned it wrapped around it. <laughs> oh, is that right? Yeah, it sounds right. So, I burn in circles with the shader. And try. I think that burning a drop ship is probably probably something that I would do. Yeah. That I would agree it would make a great burning. So nice and soft. Even though I'm at five, the board isn't sanded. So that will make a difference. But trying 
to keep it as soft as possible. And where I would have gotten to the legs or to the feet, I think I would have gone darker to have the feeling that they're there, that there's a shadow of them. And that would have grounded them better had I done that. So I would have done darker on the feet. And I'm just pretending here. <laughs> So going darker and then not as close in circles as I did before. I would have tried to blend it out a bit. And in theory, that would have given our placement of the feet and legs so they didn't look like they were footless. They were foot loose. They were foot loose, yeah. But it would have given me all the elephants now that gotta cut foot loose. <laughs> it just would have given more of the hint that we need that I need. And I would probably even because when dust is cooked up, rocks are too, so I think I would have also tapped in, stippled a bit of dust. That's all we are. It's dust in the wind, dude. And kind of blended over those and that would have given me more of I know it's hard to see and this probably wasn't the best board or explanation. No so that's what I would have done. It's good explanation. <laughs> that's what I would have done differently. And I do think I'm gonna redo this piece because I'm just curious at this point. So, a lot more contrast, not being afraid. So let's see here, and let's see if I can do a color pencil. That's a good question, Ted. Foot mm. loose or foot less? Ted has a cold, by the way. Oh, I'm sorry. So, how do I put the leg in, and I'm going to pretend you can see the foot. So putting that in, because this leg would need to be darker anyway. Get those wrinkles in. They have fabulous wrinkles. Let's don't leave them out. Very textured skin. It's so cool. But we wouldn't see the texture in the dust. And then yeah, trying to do this softly with color pencils is on printer paper is not the best. Or you could just draw them in tall grass. Oh yeah, I could have put them in. And then, then you could do even less of the legs. Tall grass. But I would need, this baby would need, let's see here, base one. Would need some kind of leg right there. I think we'd see the rump. Let's see you right about there. Now, at least he kind of looks like he's standing. Um, but yeah, grass with the chisel point would have worked as well. And I would have been able to cover up the fact better <laughs> of no feet. In fact, I think maybe the grass would have been a better idea. Yeah, but it was an artistic choice. Well, I was just copying my reference photo exactly how I saw it. So the grass would have made, and I wouldn't have done the whole bottom either. I just would have faded it out a little bit. Since we have a circle here, I think I'd kind of follow that circle a little bit. Yeah. I would make this random, maybe a little more shading back here because you wouldn't see as much of the grass. So just being a little softer so that this stands out more. Hey look, now there's a reason for the elephants to have no feet. They're hiding in the grass. 
and that makes a lot more sense and would have made the piece feel better it? and it's got some shading down here because the light source is coming if I remember right from this direction and that's it I think that works out better so the ivory hunters have to be careful because that when the elephants <laughs> hide in the tall grass they spring out how does an elephant hide in a cherry tree I, I don't know we're all adults right yeah I'll take a thumbs down for this one it paints its balls red how did the farmer die picking cherries <laughs> That is the joke my four-year-old brother told to a traveling salesman in front of all of us. Where did he learn that from? My mother. Oh. <laughs> he heard my mother telling the joke. Wow, this, this became interesting. <laughs> well, it's elephants, so I had to. So yeah, I would have done quicker strokes for lighter and go a little slower for some darker the darker would be more in the front definitely some more shading to fill this fill these guys in i do think i'm going to redo this piece even if i have to i can use other reference photos to put it together i have the practice now Stippling could also help. Well, Robin liked your joke. <laughs> well, the kids' version is how did the elephant hide in the tree? Painted its nails red. And then how did the farmer die picking cherries? The adult version is something well, that else. makes more sense. Yeah. This is it's not a very intelligent farmer, though. Like, don't think, pick it apart, Dad. You think that he would notice? Like, don't oh, pick I'm just it gonna out here and pick cherries. Like, this cherry tree looks weird. It's awfully solid looking. Like, and the way that it, the sound it makes when it, when the wind blows through it, is a little different. But that's okay. Hey, last time you did that, we got a thumbs down. Sorry. <laughs> There's the elephant in the room. Get it? Right. Yes, I do. All right, so I would spend more time darken it up. Contrast is key. Beryl says you're assuming it was a male elephant, but it was a female. That's a, that's a sexist joke. What? Can a male elephant not paint its toenails red? See, you just, just flipped it on me, didn't you? I did flip it. I flipped it hard. <laughs> some more contrast taking my time even just coloring it in on screen it looks like way better um, the grass even if I still had rubbed in the oil pastel I, I still think that actually works and then putting the grass in the grass would have to go on top or go first and then the oil pastel would be rubbed in the chat's just lost in the imagery of that joke, love. <laughs> it's a good joke. It's a joke from the 80s. <laughs> Don't try and make me like it with a, with a reference to the 80s. Well, it is. Although it is better since it came from the 80s. Okay, let's put this way again. So, yeah. Sand my board. I would tell myself, sand my board. Have a decent reference photo that has more information in it. The more information we have, the more confident we will feel, and the better our piece will come out. We won't feel like we're fighting it, because if we feel like we're fighting a piece, it shows in our work. Yes, it does. Because we're not putting the love into it. Yes, I've been fighting some of my pieces lately. I, I know you have. And that really kills creativity when you're fighting a piece. Yep. So take your time. A good reference definitely makes a big difference. Contrast. Don't be, don't be afraid to put those darks in. 
And if you are, take a picture of your photo and adjust it in your phone with, <laughs> see, Troy likes the grass. Yeah. Um, adjust it in your phone with higher contrast, we're making your darks darker and see how that looks. And that way you're not doing it on your burning and stressing over it. It's in your photo and that way when you go to burn it, you've also got your reference the way you want to do it and it's easier to follow. Or you can print it out and take colored pencils to it just like I have this and try darkening in some areas that you're not sure about. In fact, I think at doing it this way actually might be better than the phone because your hand is actually moving over the piece. Um, you're fixing things physically on your piece of paper and so it translates better in your brain. That's a good point. So I think... It's like a practice run. Yeah, it's a practice run. You got down and you're nervous, you don't know if you're going to screw it up, and we've all been there, we will always be there. There's always going to be a piece that does that to us. Printing it out and coloring on it, just like I am now, will definitely help you feel more confident. And that way when you turn back to your piece, you can do the parts that you like, and if you don't like that, you're like, okay. Well, I did not burn it on my board, so I don't have to fix it. Let's try something else. So this is the original side, and this is just putting in a little bit more detail and shading. That's why I decided, went ahead and decided to do just one side of it, so you could see the difference in it. Honestly, I wish this piece wasn't sealed now, so I could go back at least and... <laughs> and try it again. What I could do is take a picture, fix the line so the line art is correct, and try burning it that way. And just using references of other elephants to get the texture. Now this one would have more texture in the front for sure, but we could definitely still put more texture. Oh, I don't know. Do you think chat would like to see that? I don't know, they'll have to tell me if they like to see that. Well, Chad, what about that? What, me redoing a piece? Yeah. This piece. This piece? I haven't... Other than World Paragraphy Month, I haven't done an elephant in a very long time. Well, it's been 13 years. <laughs> it's been 13 years. Yeah. So yeah, let me know down in, in the chat or if you're watching this on replay, if you would like to see me, uh, I guess it'd be starting next week. I'll go back through and redo this. It'll be a new piece. It won't be this one, obviously. So let me know. And now we're going to switch over to Gila's Elephants. He, you, you saw this back in October. Keela did this piece, and he's doing it again, I believe, for somebody else. He's doing it with the Optima. And I'm already seeing a difference. I should have pulled out. Uh, actually, I have it. Sorry. I have it. It should be. I'm here, Mama. I'm trying to find. Uh... She's running around the studio, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Everything's in disarray. Oh, my goodness. What's happening now? Yeah, these are the last, these are the first ones. Where's your elephant? Where's the elephant? Uh, hey, chat is like, right? yes, redo. Redo. Okay. I can do that. Uh, and Lana good? says you had an elephant in the collage a few months ago. Yeah, that's the uh, only one. Uh, okay, so I think for, no, this is not Hewlett's. Sorry, that's not <laughs> And Ted says, Mr. Frodo, I'd love to see more elephants. <laughs> I've got her original <sighs> printed out. You know, I just realized looking through all my printouts that I have looked at a lot of elephants. Uh, is that, that's an awesome uh, Lord of the Rings reference. Ted, you get an internet high five for that. Ready, one, two, three. Where? High five. I can't find Hewlett. Okay. But I do have Hewlett somewhere else. 
Why is that the one I can't find? I can find everybody else's, but I can't find that one. Sorry uh, about that. What Connie a... McConnell says... Hi, Connie. I've just been in the corner and listening. I think it would be interesting to see a redo of Al's offense with her 13 years experience. Now, um... Let's see here. Yeah. When did Keela do these? Maybe Greg, I didn't... Barrow, did Lana, Ted, Ra, uh... I'm... Keela, did I not critique? I could have sworn I critiqued your elephants. Let, pull them up. I'll, I'm looking in my files. I have I each, each one of my critiques. I don't remember critiquing elephants. I could have sworn I... I've been here with you. That's odd. Was okay. Not, was it not ready? It could be on Facebook, and that could be what I... Because I know Keela has done this one before. And we've talked about it. You know what? It was before I started the critiques. Sorry about that. I just realized we talked on Facebook about it. Not during the live. Alrighty. Beautiful job. I am loving your elephants. The picture has been blown up. That's why it looks kind of fuzzy. It's not Hila's fault. All right, we have some beautiful darks in here, and I think these darks need to definitely stay the way they are. It's windy, that's why they're barking. Oh, okay. Um, let's see here. Get my bearings now that I threw everything off. I'm just checking. I love how the lines, you got those lines in right there of where the elephant's ears fold. It looks great. The, um, contrast that uh, she's getting like under the ears and in, in the oh, right the, here deep deep shadows yeah that is really good yeah it's creating beautiful. great contrast really strong and dynamic in the trunk wait wait Beryl says yes you did her critique because you put more shadow on the left elephant foot I see and I thought that but I can't find the files anywhere she said yes you advised me in August last year so oh it was a live that's what it was it was a regular live oh uh, okay so did i not print that out i don't know if i printed it out it's down in that file folder down there the clear one the clear one yeah so she yeah. hasn't finished obviously the baby here i'm not sure what this box yep clear box what this dot is on the oh you know what i do know what that is Okay, so what this little dot is, is, that is where the ear is connecting to the head. Okay, so we'll, let's just put a line here so I know what that is. There we go. So now, and she hasn't started working on this baby, so look at this in here. And, things will make a little bit more so once the baby's head in is, is in there is going to be a few areas I think that could go a little darker but that's a that's the great thing about being able to go back and forth um, you can darken as you go so Definitely, where baby is hugging mom. Though I don't think it needs to be as dark as your wonderful darks down here. In fact, those are all really good. I'm not seeing any of them that are off or anything like that. And once you have the other information, go make even more sense. One thing I would watch are the tusks. And I know you're trying really hard not to outline, but pushing right up against to shape them will definitely make a difference in how they look. It won't have a halo. There you go. And they will, you've got the shadow for the tusk here. Shadow here. Huh. Okay. I don't know what I did then. 
That's other cool stuff in there, though. <laughs> I think I just see the balloons barking out. Anything on our ear? In fact, if you're up to it, it looks like you've already done some. I think some of your shading could be stippling. And that will help translate the texture. Do that as soon as I can. Okay. <sighs> I gotta think of another joke to tell that he won't give me a hard time about. <laughs> Okay, so I think stippling, we, I don't know if it's the wood. It looks like you've actually been doing it because the baby doesn't have the stippling yet that mom does. So actually, I think you could go more and follow the form. So it's not flat. Let's see here. Bring some of our shadows up. There we go. I'm trying to, I should have sharpened my pencil more so I can get in here. If I accidentally make it too small. All right, there we go. That looks a little bit better. Baby's tusk will do. Working on that. But yeah, I think you're already off to great job I know in the background you got stuck last time and I think what you could actually do if you're interested is you've got trees in the background and I think you can keep your darks that you got here but I think if you kind of take it out and do kind of you're not detailing it but just putting in the feeling of some of the plants that and make and have it be bokeh that way it'll it'll break it up because these darks that you've got in the elephant i think you want to keep those with the elephant um and i think i just may grab the same damn pencil so i think in just kind of blurring out the background but getting some lighter tones in there it might work again this is all choice on um, this isn't anything technical this is just choice on the background but that way you'll get the plants without having to put all that information in okay so Sheila said she started stippling mom but she decided to, to finish hold off on that until she got baby in which is probably a really good decision because I like stippling, but it makes me go to sleep every time. It doesn't matter if I've been burning for five minutes. If I start stippling a big piece, I better put some heavy music on because I will start dozing off every time. And I love the look of stippling. I don't know what it is. Oh, that's not true. I do know what it is. It is the repetitive noise that doesn't change. I mean, my son used to play drums or have band practice. They'd practice downstairs below my bedroom and I'd tell them to turn it up so I could take a nap. They always put me to sleep. In a good way. Okay, so I think this highlight here is not as bright. I think in calming it down, we can kind of form the ridge of the forehead a little bit more. That's a little straight. I think you can do a little bit of negative burning to just um, kind of tighten up the shape in the back. I like your lighter areas here you, because of that texture in the elephant skin. I think you could actually bring it out a little bit more because it fits. 
Let's see here, that's lighter. Now I have a black and white end color that I'm looking at. Though I guess you could have seen that. I didn't have to move it. And he left me for so long. Let's see here. Do I want to tell something embarrassing about him? So this curves a little bit so we can bring it in a little bit. Did I tell you guys the straw story for Jason? I don't know. He might get mad at me if I tell you that one. Troy might know it. See, I think we can go a little darker. Just in here. But you could do that with stippling, so um, definitely a choice. Because the ears aren't like, they aren't flat. So we've got curving and indents. We want to make sure we get those in there in order for the ear to feel. Think of it almost more like um, a flower petal for the ear. Um, and I think that'll be a little easier to put it in for anybody. Um, think of it as, don't tell him I asked. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Troy doesn't know. <laughs> I was going to tell an embarrassing story about you, but I, <laughs> I thought maybe Troy already knew it. Would you like to tell your story? What story? About the straws. About the straws? I'm sorry. Why'd you bring that up? I'm sorry. I don't think we'd, you know, they're, no. Are they? Yes. Do I have to? <laughs> yes. Jesus. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was being silly. So this is a cautionary tale. Especially for those with kids. With Yes, those of you with kids. Because mm -hmm. you as parents have great power. Because your children will believe you. Like, whatever you tell them, unless it's obviously disproven. And when I was a kid, and... Uh, you know, we went to McDonald's or something like that, and and uh, we were going over a bumpy road, and my parents told me not to drink with a straw while we were going over the bumpy road, because the straw would go through the roof of my mouth and into my brain. And, like, as a kid, that was like... Serious. That was like really, like, need-to-know information. And that was like, you know, as a child, I was like, you know, like four or five, I was like, oh my God, I don't want that to happen. I better not do that. So every time that we go over, you know, go over a bumpy road, I would like carefully take the drink out and like make sure it was away from me so I didn't stab the, stab through my um, brain. brain. So it wasn't until I started doing EMT courses in the army and I was in my 20s Sorry. that I realized that this is just something that I had just taken for granted my whole life and I'd never questioned it or even thought about it we, I, we would, like I'd be on mission in the helicopter or something or wherever and we'd be like going through some turbulence or something and I'd be like oh uh, you know like I'd take the drink away from you know because I didn't want it to go through my brain and uh, professional helicopter crewmen mind you you know, and scout. Including Troy. <laughs> yeah, and uh, been to combat at that point, too. And and I didn't, it wasn't until, yeah, it wasn't until I was like 25 and was going through this course and I realized, wait a minute, that's a load of crap. It's not going through my roof of my mouth. Anyway. Sorry, I like that story. I think it's funny. So, in a good, if you can imagine all the times when I was an adult up to that point <laughs> where I would just be like doing something and then all of a sudden like take the, the straw out of my mouth because, you know, and I never got mentioned because, you know, you're going over a bumpy road or something like that and you're like, you know, oh, we, he probably just doesn't want to spill. They were not aware that I didn't want to end my life by death <laughs> through by a straw through the brain. <laughs> anyway. Hey, Troy, you didn't hear that one? 
Apparently not. But at 25, you would have been roommates with Troy, wouldn't you? It would have been I would after. Have already, it would have been after. I was in Kentucky yeah. when I had this revelation. I was already, yeah, I'd already been deployed. And <laughs> Troy, lived, you didn't know. Lived in Germany for several years. Came back. And yes. Then I had that that revelation. That, <laughs> I can't believe Troy never noticed. Yeah. You guys lived together for how long? Years. Even Troy says, stretching that professional a bit there, buddy. <laughs> Ted says, tornadoes can put a straw through a tree. Thank you, Ted. Thank you. <sighs> okay, Sheila. You're just, you're still working on the step way. I'm just kind of messing around because... I was a child. <laughs> Don't yell in the mic. Their ears. Their ears. Why would my parents do that? Because it's funny. <laughs> yeah, well, I believe in the Great Pumpkin for a long time, too, but most kids don't have their dad blowing up the pumpkin patch with black powder explosions. You see that when you're a kid, you believe. Okay, that that I completely and totally agree and understand. But... but nobody ever caught you taking... It was never brought up. That's what I'm saying. Nobody. And as a leader, I didn't. I never cautioned my soldiers to Thank go. Thank goodness. Hey, uh, you might not want to drink because I don't want to be pulling a straw out of your brain. <laughs> Thank goodness you didn't. Yeah, it might have. That might have affected my credibility as a leader. <laughs> it might have damaged my leadership. But... I'm gonna wait until. The barrel says it could be a metal straw. That's true. That's true. But not in the 80s. And everybody knows that when uh, when I was younger, the plastic straws were a lot harder. So... I think the eye needs to be shaped a little differently. Let's see if I can do it. Thanks we... for bringing up that trauma. Has a critique going. <laughs> I think I made the eye too big. Um... I'm looks waiting like, to see. Looks if, like an angry elephant. Yeah, I know. I'm waiting to see if Hila has any questions, so I know. Don't forget your angry eyes. <laughs> I'm gonna see if Hila has any questions. Let's see here. Right now, because of the lighting, it actually looks like the um, snout. Can't think of the elephant nose is kind of bending so that's an easy fix just bring in some of your shading you know and that that will help flatten a little bit because in this case it is flat with a little bit of curve slightly down at the bottom so by kind of reshaping the highlight you'll get more of what you're looking for. This is really the only thing that caught my eye. This is the woman that cut caught the top cut the, the top of my ear off during That's a haircut. That's true. And she, what, that was actually shortly either before or after the straw incident. Yeah. Yeah, I think the nose needs to be a little and where Okay, and where it's by the shadow on this side, we won't really have a cast shadow in this case. So. She says she has no questions, but no, no, that she's going in the right direction with it. Yes, you're doing a wonderful job. Wonderful job. Just continue to follow the direction of whatever particular part you're working on. And I think you will be very happy with it when you're done. Can't wait to see baby put in. I'm really not working on baby because I know that there's still a lot you want to do with it. Alrighty, so on screen, just I need to print out a before and after so that we we can see the difference. I guess I could pop it up on the screen. But... Alrighty. So Sheila has no other questions. Does anybody else have any questions? Um, 
I don't know. We'll have to wait for 30 seconds from now. I know. Hewlett is like, he's glad that I mentioned the highlight on yeah. the trunk. Trunk! That's the word I was looking for. <coughs> oh. I hate headaches. All righty. <coughs> you okay? Yeah. And we're going to switch over to Teddy's. Teddy's our last one for today. And again, oh, don't forget, we'll be doing this on Sunday. I have Ginny and Whirl lined up, but I still have a spot for two or three more for Sunday evening. So please make sure to submit the link for the Facebook group. If you're not a part of it, it's down in the description. And I always pin the uh, live advice and critiques um, at the top of the group. Alrighty, so we have a wonderful fantasy piece that uh, Teddy has done on round. Teddy, I know he's got an Optima. I don't uh, see here. I'm going to guess Basswood, but I'm not sure. It's hard to tell from my picture. Um, any old Eddie. Eddie, Terry. One of those names will work. Who are you talking to? I, exactly. Who am I talking to? So Ted did change this a little bit. He made the mushroom a little more squat. Shortened the fireplace, which I love the stone on the fireplace. Um, I think there's... Ted, have you sealed this yet? I can't remember. He was asking about varnish. Um, there's just a little few things that... If it was mine, I might change a little bit. Um, totally up to you. And let's get started. I'm just getting my bearings. Looking. This is the window that he was asking about oh, for the lighting. The that's the, yeah, that's okay. the window um, that he that Teddy was asking about. Let's see here. And Ted says cheap Walmart wood. Cheap. Oh, okay, that makes a big difference. And Grape Fanta Chan says, "Wow, I didn't know pyrography was a thing." It is very much so. It's been around for thousands of years, actually. 1800s. It was called poker art. All right. Ted says not sealed. Not sealed. Okay. Your background, you put a lot of work into your foreground. I think your background, um, you could do a little bit more with it to really put back, push out your mushroom. Because right now the mushroom, you've got this beautiful dark in the chimney. Um, you've got this wonderful dark underneath the cap of the mushroom. But we kind of lose... Um, how do I put this? kind of lose our layers um, as in foreground, middle ground, and background in the middle here. So there's definitely ways that you could fix that. I would darken up. You put these mushrooms in for a reason so we won't go over those. I think I would just darken up without any detail the background a little bit more. In fact, in the photo, um, there's some fog. Um, kind of softening this, I think will help bring it together. You don't have to go all the way to the edge, but on the tree, I do think a little bit more dark on the tree. Like you could put a couple of trees in just to reinforce that it's a forest. Um, maybe draw down with no detail. Um, this would just be uh, marks here. Um, Let's see here. Ted says, yeah, I was waiting to shade that till after advice. Oh, okay. And awesome. the art of Joseph Finchin is waving hello. Hey, Joseph. Finchum. Mm hmm Okay. He's Lisa's other mod. Oh, okay. Okay. Yep. So I would put in a couple of trees, just kind of ghost trees in the back, maybe a little bit of bushes. Yeah, there he goes, tree. Yeah. Not 
not a lot of detail. And so that leads us to the roof, because let's see here, we got two trees down. There we go, the cap. I'm, I'm just looking for the, the parts that stand out the most. Caddy Patel is here. Hi, Caddy. That's Whirl. Oh, Whirl. Mm -hmm. That's right, I forget. Yeah, I darken the door a little bit more because this is um, a, a big part of your design. So I would darken. This has more ambient light than it has direct light um, based on, we got foggy background. Yeah, this is more ambient light. Um, so, sorry, thinking. We had, we had a guy named, um, his last name was Light in, in my scout school. Yeah. And we were all, you know, getting nicknames for our, you know, flight status and stuff. And uh, he ended up with Ambient is his nickname. <laughs> okay. All right. One thing when you're doing structures that will throw any piece off, um, and this is for anybody, including myself, are the lines. When you're doing a building, it's really important to get those lines straight because it will change. It'll make something lean otherwise. But we can fix this one. We can actually... So just in fixing the lines, you'll see a difference. I may be off. Yeah. I may use a regular pencil. So color pencil. All right. As soon as I can. Just straighten the lines out. This, this really is like the first thing that will stand out is a line that is off. So, and this is just a piece of glass from Picture Frame. Um, I got a video on it, and I use this to burn straight lines with. I just sanded the edges and taped it up. Whirl is the one that was, did the aviation art, right? Yes. I find her art very plain. <laughs> nah. I see what you nah. Now on the top, because this is a grass hut uh, roof, it's okay if this part is bent because the grass, as you've got it, going up and down. So that's fine. Uh, let's see here. How... But what if the what if the um, see here. what if it's intentionally off. wonky like the uh, Weasley's house in Harry Potter? Okay, you can see the difference in that wonk. Um, oh, how do I explain that? How do I explain that? Um, because all parts of it are wonky. The wonky makes sense. Uh. If I didn't have the photo, the reference photo, the only lines that would stand out would be the windows. Um, this part for me. Because like the uh, the stone fireplace, it's not straight, but stones don't tend to be straight. And I think that works with it. But when you're trying to do more of what you would see in an actual house, I think maybe that's part of what it is. Let's see here. I, I think it doesn't fill off that then. Same with ovals. I guess I could have grabbed a darker pencil. I just grabbed. So I think if the lines can be straightened. I think this will feel in more in keeping what you're going for. I love this mushroom. 
I think it's awesome as a burning. Yes. Makes me think of um. Of what? Makes me think of Skyrim. A bit of Skyrim, yeah. Considering I've been stuck playing it again. So it's time. So it's time. Yeah. I was. Yeah, remember the wizard that lives in the mushroom? Oh, that's right. See, even my door that I did is off. And in doing that, it has thrown. So let's see if I can fix it. I don't think you're... It's more of an arrogant mage. Yeah. Sorry, that's not important. <laughs> but that's not important right now. It's not. Let's talk about art. <laughs> okay, I think I threw it off a little bit. Whoa, Greg's got to go. Daughter Bye, leaving, Greg. leaving to be induced for baby delivery. Oh. Good luck. Good luck, Grandpa. May all go well and peaceful. It's labor. It's never peaceful. All right. Let's see here. I think, well, I think other than maybe a little bit of shading right here, I think the mushroom cap can stay the same. I mean, mushrooms come in all shapes and sizes, so I don't think that is an issue. I don't think anything's an issue. I'm thinking. And now in the foreground, you've got a bush. I think. Is it a bush or a rock? Is it a bush or a rock? We'll let Teddy tell us. Um, so I'll come back to that. I do think there needs to be a little bit more dark. Troy says my art medium is Legos. <laughs> space More. Legos. Yes, you've been doing space Legos. Let's see here. I'm just darkening up what you've already got because I think. Let's see here. So this line is curved this way. It's curved. Oh, with our lantern, you might want to actually go a little <laughs> darker with that. Excuse me. It's a rock. And that will separate it from the door. So it stands out a little bit more. Uh, it's a rock. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, maybe. We can shape it. I'm trying to think of how detailed I would do this rock. So he's got the light coming this way. So, I need to make it a mess, aren't I? Mm. I think I can put a little bit more shadow, especially where there would be overhang or crags or cracks in the rock, and that will help separate it from the grass. It's okay if you put lines in that. It's a rock. Just based on what you've got, I'm just trying to Alright, so that actually makes it stand out a little bit more and then uh, we've got shadow here. I think it could use some more. Just build up what you've already got. So you've got some dark grass there. Oh, it's you. <laughs> I thought the snow plows were coming for. No. Maybe even a few more dark ones. Just to pull it together. Might be a bad idea. That's what I'm always trying to do. Pull it together? Yep. So if our lighting's going to uh, Oh yeah, that, that, that shadow is... That's good, I think. What, the, right yeah, here? the shadow. It's, yeah, it's it help, helps. It's helping selling the, that it's connected to the earth. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it wasn't bad before or anything. No, it still looked really good. It's just an extra solidifying element. Yeah, because the house is, our, is the main subject. 
Now, let's see here. The fence doesn't need to be straight because it could be logs or sticks. So I think that's awesome. We'll leave it alone. What is that, a rock? What, right here or the stones? Over on the right, a rock. I may have made it a rock. Is it a rock or is it a rock lobster? It's not a rock lobster. Rock lobster? Oh, gosh. You're worried about me. I think we can darken this shot a little bit. Rock better. lobster? Darken ding, 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 ding. Mm -hmm. What's in your coffee today? Nothing. Nothing? Well, coffee. <laughs> Alright. I think it's just kicking in though. I guess so. Alright. So, and darkening some of the ambient environment around without putting too much detail. There go. Helps the mushroom to really stand out. And since that's where all your hard work is focused, let's make it stand out. Let's see the rock and the reference. Eve says the reference picture reminds her of old movies. Of what? Of old movies. Yeah, it does. Ted is wanting to know if the overhang shading comes down more on the side. Over here. Um, let's see here. Based on the shape of what you got. Let's see here. Well, it could. It could. It depends on how big you want the cap to. Yeah to look because shadow is going to help is going to de help define the shape of the actual object so I do think <clears throat> a bit more oh your heater finally shut off I had it set for five hours timer huh. uh, slime time aka Edith has to go well, thanks for stopping we'll by, Edith. Watch for us later. Great show, thank you. Thank you. All right, Edith. Let's see here. There we go. So we gave a little bit of shape to the mushroom stem. I. Let's see here. It really depends on how. Let's see here. You've got it extended this way and this way, so that would imply that it would go down a little bit more. I swear that seal. Oh my. She can wait. We're almost done. She's been to the bathroom twice. She wants a bone. Yeah, it actually, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Alright. I was getting angry eyes out there. See, the shadow here. Let's see here. You could actually kind of follow the cap. Camera making my nose it. Let's see here. Camera well, making you it. Because it's right in front of my face and I leaned and it kind of tickled my nose. Um, Whirl has to go. Bye, Whirl. Duty is calling. She said she duty. Ha she has to go fly something. <sighs> Have fun. Be careful. I don't know. I don't. She didn't say she had supplies. I'm just presuming. Well, she's also a mother too, so that could be duty. And I think maybe the uh, the caps on these could go a little darker, just so they stand out. Let me see here. There you go. So those stand out a little bit more. Uh, let's see here. What to do? See, we've got this area. Which has a lot of light. Hmm. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm thinking. I'm trying to think. Let's see. I think actually. Well, if you wanted the mushroom to have like more ridges, you could add some shadows along there, and then it would like highlight the light parts, I suppose. What, like negative burn, where some of. Kind of what you're doing right now. Okay. Actually, not kind of exactly what you're doing. Right now, <laughs> so. Okay. And then the stone on the door. Let's see here. So, I think I have to 
watch out because I'm always watching the, the live feed, so I'm 30 seconds behind what you're actually doing right next to me. Yeah. So I have to remember that and look over from time to time. Alright, so we got our door to pop out a little bit more. I do think there, yes, there's more heating here. And I think that. I guess the door could follow the curve of the mushroom. Oh god, I think I'm coming down from the coffee. It sounds like it. Alright. Let's see here. Oh, Jules, I'm in this in time. See, and putting the shadow behind the bricks like this, it, it gives you that feeling of 3D. Yep. The bricks are standing then you, away from. You know that, that, that it's protruding from the mushroom. Yep. Let's see here. Yeah, I got. yeah, I think just a little bit more contrast, really. I think you've done an awesome job with it. I haven't done a fantasy, fantasy piece in a really long time. It look like it'd be fun. It does. Because you're dealing with an object that you don't deal with in it's real life. We can darken this part. You kind of go off the rails and do what you want. Darken that a little bit more. Let's see here. Let's make our stone look like it's sitting in the ground. There we go. And that can be the stones can be as dark or as light as you want. I don't think that really makes a difference. But if you're gonna have a lip, I think a little bit darker there. Let's see here. Maybe I should come up with a piece that we all burn. I put and we can all burn it together. I mean, I know I kind of did that with uh, the still life. I think that would be fun. Actually, yeah. that would be give an opportunity for for everybody, even non pyrographers, to join in. If you do that, I will do it too. I will do it as a acrylic piece. As an acrylic piece? Yeah, and I will add my own flair to it. So expect like machine guns and you don't do machine guns. dragons. <laughs> no dragons, I could see. <laughs> well, what kind of piece would everybody want to do? I don't know. Let's hear it, chat. And if you're watching on the replay, let us know in the comments. If we did a group piece, what would we want this group piece to look like? So, you say group piece and that we are all doing the same thing, or is it going to be like um, World Pyrography Month where it's a subject and everybody does their interpretation? No, or, I think if we can kind of nail down what we'd like to have in that piece, I'll do the line work. And then post it. And if you want to burn it, you burn it. If you don't want to burn it, don't burn it. See, looking at the camera, why do things look better? On... Can you guess what I'd say? He would want Eve would want a cat in it. What a cat? A cat. Like Eve. I know. What? That's crazy talk. I know. I Eve thought he was a dog like, person. He doesn't cat. like cats. Oh, make sure. I don't even think you know who she is. <laughs> Make sure to go share some love with Eve. He is our awesome moderator. Double awesome. Double awesome, who has been with us since actually we started. That's true. She has been the mod since we started. And we started, it'll be two years in June of live streaming. Oh my gosh. Wow. Yep, this has been part of our weekly routine. It has. Even when Troy was here, we live streamed. That's true. We yep. did. Maybe. And Missy. Oh, Maybe. we can get Missy back. If she's yeah. coming to, Missy will be coming down in March. March. Yeah. She can, she can help us out. Because March, I'll be doing the Arizona Woodcarvers uh, show down in Mesa, Arizona. I'm going to be, should be, I still need to talk to Pam at Mountain Woodcarvers, um, demoing the Optima. Plus, I'll be submitting my own work for judging. Because, yes, I get judged too. Um, I'm just adding more shading. You you definitely don't have to if you don't want to. 
I, th I think you've got some really interesting shapes to work with that you could really pop out. I'm going to, I'm going to, since I, when I'm down there, I'm just basically a loose accessory. Yeah. So I'm going to get a pair of white gloves and I'm going to walk around the show floor just like, just like testing the tops and stuff <laughs> and like exclaiming to no one in particular, hmm, dust. <laughs> I would love to do a meetup down there if people will come to Mesa. I think that would be awesome. Well, it's during the winter, March, so it's not going to be too warm, right? It is Irish Day weekend. Yeah. And so, somebody popped the gate. I can hear nails on the floor. What? Mm -hmm. So I would just kind of do some ambient in the background, maybe add a few more um, lines for trees without detail. Oh, maybe somebody didn't take the gate down. And I think on this tree, you could actually add and get some nondescript leaves and limbs hanging down. I think that just kind of fills it in a little bit more. I do think some bushes back here those would go a little darker along the horizon line and that'll help your fence be popped out more let's see is there anything else mm. you're right i was what you, you were correct in that Th that's line not what of you information. said that's not what you said. You heard what I said. I didn't hear you. Yeah, you did. Chat didn't hear you. You were I'm talking. I'm sure they did. Chat didn't hear you. <sighs> I was what? Correct. But that's not what you said. No, I said something else. I don't want to be repetitive. That's just boring. But you just said correct twice. I thought you didn't want to be repetitive. Aren't you doing something? <laughs> yeah, I think you're finishing up. Maybe a little bit of just some gradient shading on the fireplace. Just to, there we go. Have it stand out a little bit more. Do you see anything else? Nope. I think this is so awesome. I think it looks cool. It does. Now, is this a piece you would add color to? I like the quality of it as it I is. This looks yeah. like something that would hang in the in a, a Shire folk home. I was just going to say that. I could see this being on the wall of Lord of, the, of Bilbo's house. Yep. Oh, that's why you put that on the notepad. Put what? This. Yes, that's exactly why I did it. Oh. So, yeah. Does Ted have any more questions? I did bring the fireplace down a little bit because... It just makes the line feel connected to the house more. But you don't have to do that with any kind of real detail. Just, you can even put a shadow there to um, have it there. Ted says, I'm not a big color adding guy. No, no. That, that is completely artistic yeah. personal choice and nothing more i was just curious if robin says it does look cool it does look awesome and i, I just think a little bit more time and it will definitely feel like a home sweet home type situation for a gnome kind of feels like a gnome's home and tape it up just so I can see it better. There we go. And wait to see if we have any further questions. The fence could be a little darker to make it pop. But do we want it to pop? Hmm. Oh, we can see what it looks like. That's the beauty of this. Oh, Ted's color one? I did not know that. I was not aware of that, Ted. 
Luckily, that does not. Let's see here. So try saying darker fence. Let's see. Let's see. See, unfortunately, with, the, with that being darker, it actually kind of. Well, there is something about the fence, like depending on where you darken it. Like if you darken it just in the back, yeah, then it then it creates the idea that the posts are round. Um, just there's a lot that you can do there if you wanted to. The only thing I would say is that um, when you're dealing with the fence, because it's an element that's leading outside of the picture, it, yeah. it is receding. There is you're getting that. Um, it's travel that perspective so that, that it's pushing your line of sight into the piece so i think because of those angles i think that's okay because it's almost like an arrow okay um, but keep it uh lighter in the shadow yeah the art of joseph fincham so joseph says maybe the shadow sides of the doorway bricks could be slightly darker yeah and lana goes art this is says sorry for being so quiet today i really enjoyed the stream but i have to go now oh bye Lana. hi and bye thank you for being here there we go round this off a little bit there we go which means we'd have a little bit more on this side Uh, let's see here, the house comes down here, right, so I can go a little darker. I just needed to see the shape. And you could just do lines like this so that it darkens without being solid. I think maybe looking at some shadow here. Now, here's an interesting thought kind of work, relates to some work that I've been doing lately and try to notice what I'm talking about. Um, Your space Legos? It's serious. It's not real. And, and it's real. So it, in the future, the next one of these that you do, if you decide to do another one, if the door is slightly cracked, like that there's a space there, mm -hmm. that dark space is going to draw your eye into like looking at it because it's going to be like a crescent there. And it all You're talking about right here? I'm talking about like Hang on, I gotta, no. I'm talking about like right here. Right here? Like if the door was partially pushed open a little bit, then it's like inviting you to... Oh, you're saying so. Okay. So it's inviting you to speculate on what's going on or what might be inside. So... Let's see, could... Let's see if that's I can just do the, that here. That's just a thought. Yes, it is real, Troy. Thank you. It is not real, you two. It's totally real. So a little open. So we would have a little bit of lighter area here. Let's see how that would look. Let's see if I can get it dark enough. So that line would be off a little bit. A jar. A jar. You know, I got... What if you wanted a fork? <laughs> Careful. <laughs> 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 Oops. You know, I got um, I got an award one time unintentionally because um, I was in a, sa a safety class. I was certifying, and uh, the guy asked the class because we were talking about um, wall openings, which are doors and windows, right? Yeah. And he asked when a wall opening was not a door or a window, and I said when it's a jar. <laughs> And he, he was like, you like you're that? the only one that's gotten that. <laughs> so, yeah, I actually kind of reshaped the shadow a little bit and it does look like the door is open. What, you could, what could have happened, if you could still sand it and lighten it up, is um, have it be lighter so the light that you have in your window. Look at Ted's comment. I've never heard that, but that's so funny. <laughs> that's a good one sure I liked it too <laughs> spooning leads to forking now nothing I said is anything outside of kitchen that's very, that's very nice I didn't alright so 
Man, that mushroom makes me want to have soup. Soup? Yeah, it does kind of, doesn't it? Yeah. Makes me want to put my feet up. Let's see here. So I darkened this area. Book and have some yes. soup. Yes. Well, it's raining outside too. It should be snowing. <sighs> when was the last time we saw goodies? A couple of. Uh, less than two months ago? Two months ago? Uh, we can watch goodies. So maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. Good one, Joseph. Let's see. I'm trying to read it. Stake that back. That wasn't very nice. <laughs> Uh, oh, the puns, the puns. The I puns. love the puns. So maybe a little bit darker on this side just to give the curb feeling. Smurf <laughs> stew. <laughs> oh. This does no kind of look stew. like a. This does kind of look like a Smurf house. Let's see here. I'm guessing at this point anybody watching on a replay will probably already be gone. <laughs> Let's see here. Because I did darken this trying to straighten the lines, I do think over here needs to be a little darker. And watching it on camera, because it looks so much better on there. Oh, you're watching the instant feed. I'm yeah, like, I'm watching the instant. I'm like that doesn't work. It's thirty <laughs> seconds behind. You're gonna be like, no, I'm watching. Let's see here. Now, do we want the light on the lip? Oh Jesus! Oh, the door's open right now. Exactly. So, so you could actually make it because you've got your curve of the lip and how you shade it will make this curve feel more real. So Let's see it is real. There we go. So now the lip feels like it's traveling and where it's more up is where the light's hitting it. You could bring it down and accent more of the uh, texture you've already put in because I, I think that works let's see why does it look so much better on camera hmm. because you're used to seeing it directly you're seeing it objectively through the lens of technology aka objectively you already said that one. <laughs> well I apparently I'm repetitious for you I said, apparently, I'm repetitious. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I don't think you need to. Walk lobster? Boy. Now, if you want a tree branch to look like it's closer, that would go a little darker. In this way, the lighter gives you that feeling of depth. Or if you really want to like entice the viewer, like if this is hanging in the gallery, you stand beside the painting or the biographer, biography with a wood branch, with a tree branch, and then you smack the viewers in the face. <laughs> For that tree? Yeah, because it's like, it's close. Doesn't it feel close? <laughs> you would never do that. It's performance art then. You would never do that. All right. So I think, let's see here, looking, we've got our curve that keeps us in. Oh, I like the addition the of the of the background indication of the forest because yeah, that it, is giving it like another level of depth. That is the five ground right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this way, it just brings everything together and puts it at home. Yeah. And by just again, don't don't be heavy with them so that they they're back there. We can see them. There by going lighter, it pushes them back and gives you that foggy feeling. Tina Whitley says, "Great video as always. Thanks, Val and Jason. Thank you, Tina. Thanks, Tina. I think it went too dark on that one. We we gotta wrap up. I know." This is just such a cool piece that well, I... 
We need to figure out what we're going to do for the group piece. Ugh, well, I need input, so... Need input. I need input. Johnny Five needs input. <laughs> yes. And if you're not a part of the group, make sure you click the link down below because all the information and whatever we decide to do as a group will be down in the group. That way... Oops, back. Sorry. <laughs> that way we have everything in one location. And... Yeah. So, Ted, do you have any other questions? I think you have an awesome base, and I'm so glad. Now, wait a minute. Do you think that the window should be that dark? Yeah. Or that bright? Yeah. Yeah? I do. Hmm. Because it's a focal point. It's like, oh, it's bright and happy in there. They're like having a party and eating tacos and... Because glass does have tacos, tacos, tacos. I know that's not fair. I haven't taken the rest out yet. I'm gonna smack you. <laughs> now I'm hungry. <laughs> Butthead. Oh, that's what it is. Pull that out darker. There. Excuse me. There we go. By pulling out this crossbar, it connects to. The outer frame. Sheila says, don't mind what the group piece is as long as I'm out of my comfort zone. Oh, you're out of your comfort She wants to be challenged. Okay. I have no idea what it will be. Not me. I want an easy way. Because that's what you do. That's right. Let's see here. Robin had tacos last night. <sighs> Ted says, a landscape. A landscape. Wait. That'll be out of my comment. I don't zone. understand that comment. On the group thing. It, no, he says a landscape drip bell. Right? Landscape drip. I don't know. I don't get that one. <laughs> He'll explain. Alright. I have to break that one down in Barney style for me, Harry Ted. Sorry. Alrighty. So, if we don't have any other questions. I can't wait to see this one finish. Yeah, it's gonna be awesome. It is awesome, but it, yeah, it'd be more awesomer. That's that's real. More awesomer. More yeah. Awesomer. I wonder if we all shouldn't do a mushroom like this. Yes, I would totally do a mushroom like this. Will you? Oh my god! All right, let's see Go. what I can come up with. Cause I do like this. <gasps> what? It's gonna be ninjas and mice. What? Nothing. I did, I'm not putting ninjas and mice in here. So not drip. I. No, on my piece. Oh. Okay. So if we don't have any other questions, I think we're gonna go ahead. Oh, autocorrect. Got him. Ah. Uh, so not drip. Okay. Uh, <laughs> a landscape. Uh, so. To do Val is as comfortable. You already have my input for group project. What was? Oh, he wanted to do the uh, the dropship from Aliens, like descending upon the colony. Okay, but I have to do something that's copyright free. That would not be copyright free. That is the owner of all of those people. Alrighty. So if we don't have any further questions, we will also be doing the uh, special live on Sunday. For anybody who can't make the Tuesday 11 a.m. Oh, uh, Sian says I missed almost all live streams. Sorry, Sian, but you're here now. <laughs> Even though we gotta go. All of you guys have done an awesome job on your pieces. I think these are great to look at. And next on um, Sunday we have what an otter. We have a portrait, and then whatever else anybody submits, <laughs> because. I'm still waiting on at least two more. Because if not, it'll be a short live. Alright, let's see here. Let's, I'm just taping them up so we know what we did. Which just head to. And your olifants. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is their work. I think they all did beautiful jobs. 
So awesome to see everybody's art. Yes, I love did. it. Everybody is extremely talented. Yeah, I love seeing everybody's art. I guess I could do it like this. I could be talented by association. <laughs> Don't forget. You're awesome. You can do this. You're a pyro artist. Yay! I got it right. Yay! <laughs> Don't forget to hit the like button. Leave a comment down below. Happy burning, guys. Bye. Bye.